Welcome to Module 10, Evidence of Supernatural Design from the Anthropic Values of Our Universe's Constants. This is the 10th module in a 12-module series entitled God in Modern Physics. It is presented by Father Robert J. Spitzer of the Magis Center of Reason and Faith, and it is based on his recently released book, New Proofs for the Existence of God, Contributions of Contemporary Physics and Philosophy. Welcome to the Magis Center of Reason and Faith series, God and Modern Physics. I'm Father Robert Spitzer, and we've been talking about the evidence for a creator, evidence for a supernatural designer, evidence for God that comes from uh, physics and contemporary astrophysics. We have been now talking about the evidence for supernatural design specifically, and we just introduced the notion of a constant, and uh, we were looking at the high improbability of our initial conditions, our low entropy universe, and, and the need to have some reasonable explanation for why this highly improbable event occurred. And now we see that we have a whole variety of constants, the speed of light constant, Planck's constant, the Hubble constant, the cosmological constant, uh, the strong nuclear force constant, weak force constant. We have 20 constants that have very, very specific values, and those specific values, they control all the equations of physics. When we say E equals mc squared, C is a constant. It refers to 300,000 kilometers per second squared. And that number controls the conversion of energy and mass within the universe, everywhere in the universe. And we call it a constant because that number remains invariant. It remains constant everywhere in space, past in the past of the universe, and will presumably remain constant in the future of the universe. So this constant regulates the equations of physics. Now you may say to yourself, well an equation, uh, an equation is just something of, of human beings making. Not really. An equation describes the laws of physics. The things, the laws that control all of the ways in which energy and space-time and the different forms of energy interact. So the equations are controlled by this number, this, these constants, and the equations describe the laws of physics which control all energetic uh, interactions, all uh, interactions between energy and, 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 uh, and space-time within our universe. And, and so in a way you can say that the constants really do control everything that happens in the universe. Now to begin with, let's face it, constants themselves we're really lucky to have them. Because if we didn't have any constants in the equations of physics, then the laws of physics would continue, it, it, they'd be absolutely variable. And if the laws of physics were absolutely variable, quite frankly, you wouldn't get any life forms at all. You wouldn't know what the universe would be like from one second to the next. Everything that might have occurred in a previous evolutionary process over one minute phew, would be gone the next minute as the constants change. Well, we really do need constants. And we do need the constants to be constant. And that in itself is a highly improbable thing. But let's just skip that for just a minute and just take it for granted that we're going to have constants controlling the equations of physics. Whew, really lucky we do. And then that the equations of physics which control the laws of physics, uh, they in turn, of course, make for a very orderly universe. An orderly universe that emerges out of the Big Bang with even the possibility of giving rise to a life form. This is truly extraordinary. Let, let me give you some examples uh, of this. Recall, oh, first example, just recall what I said, that the gravitational constant and the weak force constant, remember our four forces, so the gravitational constant connects with our gravitational force, the, the uh, weak force constant connects with the, with the uh, weak force, and so notice then that uh, we have uh, uh, the possibility of, of uh, these constants having just about any value you could want, higher or lower. Remember that. The constants have specific values, but there's no necessity that they have these values. Now, if the gravitational constant or the weak force constant were off 
higher or lower, by one part in 10 to the 50. This is a really small fraction. This is like a decimal point with 49 zeros and a 1. That's a really small fraction. If it were off by one part, either one of these constants, higher or lower, if they were off by one part in 10 to the 50, then either the universe would have catastrophically collapsed, which would, of course, prohibited a life form, or it would have exploded in its expansion, which would have also been deleterious to a life form developing. Any life form developing. We're not talking about life forms that we know of. We're not talking about life forms from our periodic table. We're just talking about the possibility of any life form. So if just with these two constants, there's you know, 20 of them that we know of, if these two constants are up by one part in 10 to the 50th, you can't even have a life form. We're really, really lucky that the gravitational constant, the weak force constant, have the precise value that they do, even though they could have had any value higher or lower, really, within any kind of reason, almost an indefinite range of possible values that would have all prohibited a life form developing in our universe. Whew. Do you really believe that this happened? By pure chance? Let's take another example. The strong nuclear force, it also has a coupling constant. So the strong nuclear force coupling constant, do you realize that if it were higher, that constant's value were higher, just by 2%, there would be no hydrogen in the universe. This would be very, very bad for life forms development because, of course, no hydrogen, you have no nuclear fuel for heat, no water, no nuclear fuel for heat, no water, no life. Alternatively, if the strong nuclear force constant were 2% lower than it currently is, you would have no element heavier than hydrogen, no helium, no carbon, in other words, no life coming off of our periodic table. We're really lucky that the strong nuclear force constant is precisely what it is, that it entered within that very narrow range of possibilities for a life form, any kind of a life form, to emerge from the periodic table in our universe. The odds against this are enormously low, but it just so happens that the constant has that value. Let's take another example. Do you realize that if the gravitational constant or electromagnetism or the mass of the proton compared to the mass of the electron, if they were off by one very, very minuscule part, around 10 to the minus 39, if they were off by one very minuscule part, any of these constants, then all of the stars in the universe would either be blue giants or red dwarfs. That is to say, they would be stars, right? Our, our, everything is at the point of convective instability in our universe. And, and the point is, a blue giant or a red dwarf are, are stars that are uh, uh, fundamentally not going to last very long, and they don't give off the kind of radiation that would be necessary in order for a life form to develop in the universe. Our stars. The stars like our sun are right between blue giants and red dwarfs, thank goodness, because a life form can develop. But yet, if these three constants, if electromagnetism and gravity or the, the, the uh, uh, electron mass compared to the uh, proton mass were off by just a smidge, a tiny, tiny fraction, we couldn't possibly have life form developing in the universe itself. And the same thing, by the way, applies just with the development of carbon. And this is, by the way, what caused Fred Hoyle to convert from his atheism to theism, where he basically believed and came to the conclusion that there was a supercalculating intellect. See, every atomic structure has resonance levels. So there's a resonance level uh, for beryllium and oxygen and carbon. And, and what happens is that this, uh, these uh, 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 resonance levels help uh, atoms and molecules to stick together or to fly apart. Now, you have to have a very, very, very 
narrow range for the resonance levels of beryllium, oxygen, um, helium, and carbon to fall in in order to have the abundance of carbon that we have today and a carbon that really has the sticking or the bonding properties that it has today. The odds are so incredibly low for this to occur that Fred Hoyle finally looking at the very possibilities of this happening by pure chance declared that blind forces aren't even worth thinking about and declared that it is reasonable to believe in a super calculating super intellect. These are the conclusions we get with the basic study of anthropic coincidences. To learn more about this series and the Magis Center of Reason and Faith, please visit www.magisreasonfaith.org. That is www.magisreasonfaith.org. You may purchase Father Spitzer's book on this subject, New Proofs for the Existence of God, Contributions of Contemporary Physics and Philosophy, on the website or through Amazon.com.